cool. Hey, Adam, how's it going? Glad you made like, it. Hey, I got good news real quick. So yep. I was on a Zoom with my people in Dubai. Yep. They agreed to release the money for your jumps in November that we're going to do. That you questioned me about yesterday. I apologize. I was in meetings all day and I couldn't I couldn't get out. I tried. Yeah. Hey, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I, mm-hmm. I um, yeah, and, and so at this point, we're talking about doing the jumps either in Arizona or in Texas. West Tennessee. Yeah, well, yeah, West Tennessee, but we also for the 80,000 foot stuff because mm-hmm. it's to that. These are just preliminary. We'll break, you know, we're, why not break a world record in training if you can. Right. right. So the big jump's going to be in Texas from the helium balloon. I'm working on that one to get them to change it to a capsule because. Brian, I want you on that jump with, with us. Well, there's a cap. There's a capsule right down the road here at the Air and Space Museum, the one that Baumgartner used. I don't know if we can. <laughs> right. They, yeah, he, he knows you. When I told him, hey, Derek, can we use your King Air for a free fly altitude world record? And I, he goes, who's doing it? And I told him, I go, Brian and Jason. He goes, that's a done deal. He goes, let me know when you want to do it. Cool. I'm like, cool. That was, I go, that was right. easy. Nice, nice, nice. That, yep. that that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You get started and break one record and sort of get a little momentum, right? Build up to it, you know. And you know the, the jump with Mike to do that forty-two thousand foot jump. You understand, yeah. like at that altitude, you have to be on point. Everything has to be flawless because the very slightest error could cause a lot of problems. Long story short, yeah. and you know I want to break the do great things with my team for very good reasons and a couple of charities but i also want to do it safely and do it smart and where my teammates can have break records and have fun doing it and get home to their families you yeah. know safely more about this like the thing you do i like brian is the whole transcending fear thing you know and i've been really following that because you know part of the skydiving game in my personal opinion 90% of it is mental, right? Yep. Over a mental little trip when yep. you're at altitude. You know, yeah. and, you know, I think that's a good topic to talk about because it's going to help a lot of people learn how to flip the switch that needs to be flipped in the right way. And so, Yep. I had uh, one of the most epic conversations of, of all time, I think, in DeLand at the little, uh, the little restaurant there with Joe Kittinger. Um, talking I'm, specifically about you know sort of addressing the fear in a variety of ways, right? Because it's not just one thing. You can't just have the thought calm down because your body doesn't speak thought really. I mean, eventually it sort of catches up, but that takes a lot more time. It speaks you know physiology. It speaks action. It speaks breath, mm-hmm. right? Now, in terms of the rate of respiration and muscle tension. Um, but they're also, there's sort of a limit, um, kind of in the same, same way the guy that started AA, he came to the conclusion, um, hey. that we are meeting, especially, you know, with, with, uh, with Jung, Carl Jung, that, that we can decide that we want to quit something or change something, but there needs to be a higher perspective to really spur it. And I thought that was very interesting because talking to Joe, if you listen you know, what he said right before Felix Baumgartner exited, he said, our angels are with you. Start the cameras. And our guardian angel will take care of you. Right. So there was sort of a spiritual perspective that he also held in addition to check your gear, <laughs> check your breath, check your physiology, check your thought process. But I think there's always going to be some kind of a, a spiritual component to anybody that's going to be, you know, sort of pushing the edge, whatever, right. whatever, whatever that means. You know, I mean, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a, a spiritual perspective that that allows you to feel like I can I can do this. And what I can't do, the universe is going to sort of pick up and help me help me through it. You need to have something to perk your senses so you have that little bit of little bit of fear in a healthy way because then you're you're all your senses are alert you're paying attention more yeah see what I'm saying? yeah absolutely yeah. I, I mean i would say language wise in my interpretation fear is a is a saturated state of doubt whereas 
sort of awakening to the risk is a, is a different trip, you know, where you feel adrenaline because you know you're at risk. You know you got to pay attention. You know that you're about to jump out of a plane or something like that. But that that raising of the house lights that of your awareness where you're waking up and going, all right, I got to be on, you know, this is game face, game face time. That to me, that I don't I define that as fear because that's an expansion and fear to me is a contraction. I feel like I get a little too comfortable though, you know, and right. I guess it's a putting it. Yeah. 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 Delusionally comfortable. That, that comes, that comes, Great to, word. You, you jump, yeah. enough, you jump enough and you start thinking you're safe. Right. And you're like, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm cool. I'm calm. I've done so, this for years. You're not, yeah. You're not paying attention to the things you should be paying attention to. You know yeah. what I mean? And yep. so fundamentals, check your pin. Where's right. My, where's my pilot shoe? What are my three readings looking like? Do I have my handles in place? I just, I'm excited to see you and Jason get crazy out of that plane. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, well, good, we, we got to do, we got to do some low jumps with the gear. You know, we, right. we, we need to do a, a series of jumps, just fleshing out the details and, uh, you know, staying warm. You know, that, that to yeah. me, is, you know, that's one of the biggest issues because you, you can meditate your way into using, you know, a little bit less oxygen and, you know, slowing yourself down. But if you're frozen to death, what's the point? <laughs> you know, if, right? if, you're, if your hands are useless and you can't pull, and I've been there when it's really, really cold and my hands become useless. Um, for right. So that's, you know, so hopefully yeah. Eustace and his team will be able to contribute. But yeah. Grant told me he's going to keep you warm. They'll keep everybody okay. warm. All right. Like, okay. Good. That's awesome. I love it. It's very, very exciting. So, I look forward to seeing where all this stuff will go. And it's funny because right before you, you reached out a couple of days ago that, you know, okay, it looks like we're going to be green light for the, the first of the series of jumps. I had, I wrote an article in the middle of the night. I sometimes I get these like, you know, call them downloads and about how we, we didn't send one man to the moon right we yep. sent two, we sent two people to the lunar surface right. and that's mm -hmm. not for redundancy of of the assistance of somebody else that can say hey you know this is wrong and we need to fix the spacecraft and hope oh, you fell over here let me help you back up it was uh, it, we require a relationship to fully experience something you know, for all of us to feel like we put those footprints on the moon, we needed a conversation that happened on the moon, not just some guy looking around going, holy fuck. You know what I mean? And so the fact that right. that it'll be, you know, um, Jason Peters and myself and, you know, it it really it goes off of away from the ego mind of. Baumgartner, you know, the great man, you know, it, 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 we, we, we sort of subscribe to that as a society a little too much, in my opinion. So right. to me, one is none. We need to go towards, a, you know, sort of a we mentality in the world. And, and I think it's really beautiful that we're going that, that direction right. with this project. Right. With me in the middle of a skydive, I, I go into a different zone. You know what I mean? It's more of a spiritual thing at a certain point in free fall where I'm just letting myself, I'm, I'm surrendering myself to my environment. Boom. Mm -hmm. And everything just goes into autopilot at a certain point. It's really weird. Maybe you can understand what I'm talking about. I do. I just go into autopilot in a so different zone. There like, is like, yeah, like, flow, flow like, state, right? Flow state. Right. Great. And what I would say is the next level flow state is a collective flow state where a team is working together. You know, so when I when I work with the spec exactly. ops, the spec ops guys and I watch how they operate and how they communicate, it's like they're on an Ethernet, that there's a, a you know, a, a silent communication and specific words. I mean, specific things that that are kind of a large concept uh, abbreviated into a smaller you know number of words. That's a, that's an amazing thing. You know, and so that team aspect of it, I think, is really vital to do great things. Yeah. I, I that's what I like about this situation with our team is I'm if you've seen in my conversations that I'm all about the team, you know, or a package deal. I tell people that this isn't about me, this is about my team. If it wasn't yeah. for my team, I wouldn't be here doing it. So, you know, and, and that's the way I treat I treat this as, as it's a team effort. 
And my team is more important to me than I am to myself. And I'm looking at it, I go, you know, my patience has paid off. You know, I believe that everything happens in its own time, right? We mm -hmm. can sit there and push to make things happen, but everything happens in its own time, irregardless. We don't have control there. Life, I yep. feel like there's something inside of us that's really going on that we just don't have a full understanding of. But everything yeah. happens in time, and I think that time is coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would I would say that that the belief that physical reality is all there is is missing a component. You know that the, that the dream state or whatever you want to call the non physical thought process is where we're constructing the basis upon which the future experience will be laid. The matter shows up because of of the visualization, but because of uh, the dream, if you will. And it's the investment in that dream and not the investment in the doubting of the dream, the, the taking it back, you know, that'd be great. But, you know, if you chop off the and you just keep lining up the belief that, yeah, I think I will eventually jump in Yosemite legally, you know, <laughs> it's not real right now. You know, it's not real right now, but it it, it is in my mind because I'm seeing it. Seeing the power of creation, you know, being able to invest in an idea. And then add an emotional layer to that idea that is that's lifting it up like the air in the hot air balloon. It's the faith, the faith, faith that your parachute's going to work when you pull. There's no parachute over your head yet, but you're seeing it in your mind as you're throwing your pilot chute out. That's right. That's a beautiful. It's uh, it's one of our skills that we have as a human species, but it's not what most people do. You know, they just work on you know put this screw on this bolt, you know, I'm, I'm working with a mechanical aspect of reality. Then you're never generating anything that's not there. It's one of, one of the many branches of the tree of consciousness is that flow state where you do calm down, you do see all the possibilities and you select the one that's going to be the highest probability of success. Right. But it's not the only possible mind state, you know, people have malfunctions and freak the fuck out. You know, <laughs> they, they freeze up, they do the wrong thing. They pull their handles in the wrong order. I'm not saying it's often, but it's available. You know, it's always there. And I think that when we have those flow state experiences, it's important to sort of feel good about the fact that we made a choice in the moment to focus on the breathing instead of the contraction, focus on the solution instead of the, the visualization of, oh, if I continue with the physics of this situation, you know, if I follow that vector to its terminal point, I'm toast. Yeah. So right. I'm not going to give it any more time. You know, I'm going to get off of that, that set of train tracks, that thought stream. Right. Into one that's going to be, you know, the hero's story. The guy that walks away and goes, whoo, that was crazy. <laughs> you know, dragon almost, right. the dragon almost ate me that time. But once again, you know, my, my ability to slow time down in a way that gave me more available options mentally. Um, it, it, it worked again. <laughs> we all have that. Yeah. I've observed that it happens in lots of other things too. I've observed that it happens when I'm, when I'm sliding down a mountain with a stick or two on my feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I find that it happens when I'm on a bike going fast. I, I think that there's multiple opportunities on this earth to really go into these places where it's either flow or go. You know what I mean? Either you get into that that groove of the calm, cool mind state that is the master of time because it's the master of breath. It slows the time down by breathing slower, or you're going to be found wanting. You know, you know right. that's right. That's, that's yeah, as I say, that's the end of that one. You know, uh, and that's the beauty of risk. You know, it forces us into the situation where we it's hero or zero. Right. I, I, my thing is just a, the complete surrender. Once you're in free fall, there's no crawling back in the plane. So yeah. completely surrender what you're in the middle of, adapt your mental mindset to be able to calm down and operate at that altitude because you're falling and there's no turning back into the plane. So you might as well get with it mentally, relax exactly. because there's nothing more you can do about it and then have fun flying around. Yep. You know what I mean? And do it Total right. Acceptance. <laughs> yeah. Totally acceptance. If you, if you can't change it, you might as well love it. Ha, ha, ha.
in, in one form or another, exactly. you know, you can be in a spinning malfunction and go, oh, this is exciting. I have something to really attack with my mind in a way. Maybe that's the wrong word. Maybe not attack, but, but to pour myself into the situation and go, all right. So my engine quit, you know, where's that? Right. Robert. <laughs> well, you've got, <laughs> are you flying with an electric starter now or no? Cause you used no, to have on your black <laughs> devil motor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But- we have, we have like an eight to one glide ratio. So if the motor goes out, you're going to land safely anyway. You've got That's some time. Fine. Yeah, you've got some time, but it's nevertheless an emergency. And if you don't do something, you're going to land where you are, at least within a one to eight ratio of that location. And right. Safe. But when, when when I'm flying, I'm always I'm always thinking the motor is going out. I have that, that, that. OK, I can fly a few more minutes. Then I got that, that, that place to land. And then you fly some more. So you're yeah. always, it's like skiing. You're planning two, two gates ahead. <laughs> right? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What if, what if, not- yeah. And that's, that's, uh, that's not paranoia. You know, I mean, if that's all you think about, it's paranoia, <laughs> but, but if, if you're occasionally having the snapshot of unwanted possibility solution, oh, other unwanted possibility solution and each one goes in a different direction in terms of our actions that's sane right <laughs> we just have to keep opening our minds right i mean that's Absolutely. that's kind of the whole point is that you know at one point skydiving was belly flopping on the air only mm-hmm. and then and that- and sat in the air right right <laughs> yeah well i get yeah, right. I started, it was like, you know, belly mount reserve days and I was doing standups and nobody believed me, you know, cause I was alone. Nobody could keep up with me. So that was like the solo I would jump out and, you know, do a stand up and kind of play around with it, like the meat missile. And, and it was just so much fun. And then we'd go into like sitting on our booties back when we actually started to get booties. Tony Uragalo was making those booty suits. He was one of the very first. And I could sit upright into what is now called knee flying, but in the eighties, it wasn't, it was just called weird, <laughs> you know, but it's launched, like flying? Right? it's launched some stuff. <laughs> it wasn't as, it wasn't as, it was scratch, right? You remember right. scratch, scratch garrison. I was a baby when he was experimenting, like literally a baby when he was ex- experimenting in the sixties with head down, you know, on acid. Right. <laughs> pulling an eight because the spiders underneath him were freaking him out. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I love about Scott. There's such, there, there's so much room for evolution of that sport. My grandpa always said, it's better to keep your mouth shut. If you thought it was stupid than to open your mouth and room all down. And, you know, it would tell me this is what I want to do. Well, you can't do that. Well, why can't I do that? Because it's never been done that way. Yep. And I'm like, well, we're going to do it that way and do it. And then, see, we did this. This is possible. This can be done. I think the older people are, it's a fear based. No, it can't do it that way. Yep. Because yeah. it's, because it's a retraction. Right? Yeah. The fear is just a retraction of, no, that's too weird, too new. Right. Yeah. What we're going to do new. And we just got to. Gonna- Cut away. We got to cut away from those limitations, you know, and just stay right. smart about it so that we can be the ones that are still here telling the stories. Right. Exactly. If they're going to come back and go, hey, how'd you do that? I want to see that. Well, that's an opportunity. To, we did it. Now we can open the door to help you evolve a sport and you know, make the equipment better, a more high performance, and at the same time, make it safer, you know, yep. and bring those together. You know, and if I can leave this sport and have had an input on that and a positive impact, irregardless of whether somebody likes me or doesn't, I don't care. It's okay. Not everybody in life is going to like you. But even the guys that don't like me, I appreciate them because they pushed me to do these big things too. They've pushed my boundaries to, to again, like I said earlier, to do things that I never thought I could do. Yeah. So I, I have a love and appreciation for that, you know, because those are the guys that are going to watch too. You know, so those are the internet. Those dad, I I love haters. I love them. Like, I love I love the haters more than I love my my friends because those <laughs> those are the guys 
push me. Those are the guys that are going to watch this that we can turn into dollars where we can actually help out something in the community when we're done and leave yeah. a positive footprint where we go. It just needs to happen. You know, it's right. like one of the eight principles of success. You know, always give back. Never be afraid to fail. But the most important thing is always give back to wherever you are. I want to turn my critics into co into colleagues. You know, you know, I want to turn their, the colleagues. Hey, you actually did a good thing here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Cool. But in order, to, somebody's got to take the fire for a while in order to make that happen. So, I've been taking that fire for thirty years, so I'm built for it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so. Right on. That's cool. It's very exciting stuff. It really, mm -hmm. really is changing the world. It's been a pleasure. To get yeah. together and talk about inspiring things, to launch exp inspiring dreams. Hopefully, you know, as this this whole project evolves, I, I'd like to see you know all my friends involved in one way or another. I mean, Robert can sh you can shoot all kinds of cool aspects of this if you wanted to. Oh, I'd I'd love to be involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah be, Robert. Like the the storyline, you know. I mean, Robert. I don't know if you realize this, Adam. Robert won an Emmy. Direct two, my mistake, two oh, Emmys. Director of photography, kind of you know, like, yeah, most people don't realize who they're talking to. And they, <laughs> yeah, they're just like, oh, he's just some skydiver, <laughs> you know? And so I would love to see, I would love to see that, you know, to be able the synergy of the, the magnificent friends that I have. I've I've been very fortunate <laughs> to, to have crossed paths right. with 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 so many of the coolest people that have ever lived not just that happen to be on the earth now um and i, I think when we pull our resources right. come together we can fan the flames of something that really helps and it and becomes huge and it helps inspire people that's yeah. that's the big thing. helps inspire people we need it right now because people are just right. like holy shit shock and awe watching the news too much um when there's so much other positive stuff going on in the world you know to 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 look a little bit you know towards deliberately seeing the things that that light your own fire in a good way you know so that you can take it right. home well how can i make you know sort of a, a microcosm version of that risk reward uh you know coming to the you know the, the table with all your chips and just saying i'm all in let's do this thing um right this is this is a metaphor for that, and there's a lot of people that uh, that that can be turned on, and that's you know, my old, that's, that's why I'm involved. Oh. How do you interpret your experience? You know that the there is right. a way to, to look at absolutely everything that happens, and and flip it around and go. This I'm glad this happened. I'm I'm glad that 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 hurt. I'm glad that that scared the shit out of me. I'm glad that I went into a place of absolute doubt. So that I could resurrect my own inner belief in myself. Because the bottom right. line, the experiences, that's what we're here for. The more experiences, the better. Exactly. There it is. So basically, there's a feed. So it tells you all, you know, sort of most recent events. You can communicate directly with me or any of the other folks and ask questions. So just like Facebook um, and then down here, the session recordings here dating back, uh, well, three years, um, several, several times a week. And these are all an hour to an hour and a half, at least most of them are an hour and a half um, with the dates on there. And what we're working on now is also adding specifics of what we covered Um and then the live events three times a week, like I said, and all those have just got the link in here. Community conversations, improving your landings. These all have different, you know, videos or articles or things like that. Mind game, uh, lots and lots of virtual reality simulations showing, you know, tweaks to the pattern, um, you know, based on winds, different drop zones, things like that. All kinds of good stuff. Ground launching. You know, a bunch of the talking skydives are on here as well. You name it, man. You name it. You know, even I added a new category this week, the holistically healthy skydiver. We're talking about nutrition and exercise and, you know, how to feed our brains, you know, all kinds of different things um, that that relate. You know, it relates. 
um, you know, your performance is something that uh, it is going to vary based on how you feel. So I, I feel like approaching skydiving from a holistic perspective is, is essential. Somebody that has natural ability and understands the situation completely can be held back by their drinking problems. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, yeah. you know what I mean? Or what there's, there's all these different things that we have to be looking at. You know, if, if we're all in, you know, I am, you know, and yeah, no. I, everything I do is part of my skydiving training, everything. <laughs> um, I think you'll love it. I think you'll love yeah. it. You know, and, and people use it sort of like a podcast or on a road trip or something you put in your earbuds or put it on the car, you know, system and just sure. listen to the conversations. And we get folks that are, that are really new and we got mm -hmm. folks that are instructors. We got base jumpers, you know, wingsuit people. We got paraglider folks. Cause I like that stuff too. And we'll, yes. we'll talk about whatever the community wants. And believe me, I don't, I don't have all the answers in, and that's the good, the good thing about community is that we can find the answers together. Right. Absolutely.